It's On The Rise with Benny, and today I sit down with an emerging artist that is kind of taking country music by storm. I see him on on every country riser list that you can possibly find. Uh, He's been on tour with Tyler Hubbard and is actually hitting the road with Chase Rice this year in 2024. He was named Spotify Hot Country Artist to watch, Amazon Music Breakthrough Artist, and he's not your typical Nashville artist, actually. He is from Canada. So today I welcome Owen Rigling to the show. Owen, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Benny. All the way from the Great White North. Let's go. (laughs) Yeah. So just to kind of start, you know, you're the first guest from Canada. You're one of the first people, actually, artists from Canada that I've met. Give us some background. Who are you? You know, where, what was growing up in Canada like and how'd you get started in music? Yeah, of course. Well, my name's Owen. I'm from a small town in Ontario, Canada called Mild May. And I grew up there my whole life. And I actually moved out about a year ago. I moved 10 minutes down the road to a, to another small town. So I'm still kind of just living in the middle of nowhere. And I love it. Um, That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, I make tons of trips down to Nashville. And my producer, Brad Hill, is based out of Nashville. So we've been making trips down there and doing a lot of recording and um, you know, getting, getting access to some of the best players in town, which has been so cool. And, um, but I, yeah, I mean, I got my start in music, just, I got my first guitar from, for Christmas out of a Sears catalog. It was like a hundred dollar piece of crap guitar and it was an electric guitar and I didn't even have an amp, but I was, just, <laughs> you know, rocking out on that thing. And I started just wanted to be a rock star, like at the age of nine years old. And then I just went down the path of taking guitar lessons. And my music teacher at the time was a big country picker. And he still is. He's great. And uh, he kind of got me into playing a bunch of old like Merle Haggard stuff and sort of learned the roots of country music that way. And then I fell in love with um, the chief, Mr. Eric Church, when I was like 15 or something. I, I fell in love with his song Springsteen specifically is sort of what pulled me in. And then I just tried to, you know, write songs that I thought Eric would would like. And that was sort of my mission in the early days. And here I am 10 years later, still trying to do that. So it's been a journey, but it's been uh, been super fun. Oh, that's awesome. I love how you kind of you picked, you know, a specific artist and kind of use that as your inspiration behind your music. I think. Um, wow. Very cool. Uh, so did you start singing or writing first? What did that look like? I started I honestly when I started singing I was writing I didn't know how to sing like I I mean I started singing at 15 or 16 um my first gig was with that guitar teacher I I talked about his family band they got me up for a couple songs I think I think I sang like um Work A Man Blues by Merle Haggard Buy Me A Boat by Chris Jansen and there was one other song it was a Brad Paisley song but I forget what it was and that that was my first time singing in front of people and I really hope there's no videos of that floating around anywhere because it's super embarrassing, I'm sure. But I kind of caught the bug out of that. I remember getting in the truck afterwards and just saying to my parents, like, I want to do this, whatever. That feeling was amazing. So let's just keep chasing that. Um, And then, I mean, I just started writing songs right away and they were very bad at the start. And hey, you got to start somewhere, though. Totally. Yeah. I mean, get through the bad ones to, you know, find the odd good one. I still write lots of bad songs, but. Maybe every 10 songs good. So that's cool. <laughs> um, when, like, did you always, once you started doing some gigs and stuff, were you just like, this is, this is what I'm going to do? Like, did you ever have a backup plan? I mean, um, I didn't know. I, uh, no. <laughs> when I was younger, like, I've always had crazy dreams, sort of, and just, like, always wanted to do something outside the box. I, didn't, I never, I never was like, I want to be a millwright or, like, I want to be, you yeah. know, uh, a, my buddy my one buddy's a pilot everybody else that I grew up with is sort of you know in construction they're millwrights they're farmers and like that's what they wanted to do with their lives and like I always just had sort of a wild idea that you know when I was a kid I was really into hockey I grew up I mean I'm in Canada I grew up playing yeah. hockey and I was like I'm going to the NHL like that's what I want to do with my life and my parents were like okay yeah you can do that for sure you're like, for the stars okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it sort of just, I just did that with everything I did. And then eventually I, I found the, the guitar and I found songwriting and it just sort of like, it was like a 10 X of anything I've ever felt. So I just went all in on that and uh, here we are, you know? Oh, that's awesome. Um, So with you kind of being the first person from Canada, the first artist, I'm curious. And I feel like a lot of listeners will be curious as well. Like how being from Canada, how do you break into 
a different market like Nashville, you know, kind of give me the rundown on that. What, like, what's the difference? What have you had to go through being from a different country to get into those, that scene? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And I honestly don't even know how to answer that. I feel like, I mean, I'm still living here. Right. So yeah. it's crazy the amount of support I'm getting in a place like Nashville, like with the Spotify thing. And, um, I mean, it's just amazing. I, I, uh, I guess the Spotify folks like my music and they're like, you know what, this kid, this is the kid. And, uh, I appreciate you're, so you're, it. you're signed with universal. Has that kind of helped yeah. being signed to a label? Totally. I mean, I'm signed to universal up here in Canada. Um, I did a contest called through boots and hearts music festival, which is a giant festival up here in Canada, the biggest sort of outdoor country music festival we have. And they do this emerging artist showcase and this was a couple of years ago now, I, I kind of went up there and played and I ended up winning the contest. And then that connected me with Universal, which is supposed to be like a singles deal. They get you like they put a single out or something for you. But then it ended up being a full record deal that they wanted to sign me for. So that kind of led me down this path. of Yeah, they connect me with my producers and then I started working my way. And um, I think just little by little, it I mean, I'm still, working on, I'm still working on getting down there and, uh, you know, doing the thing for real but I mean it's cool to see the amount of support and friends that I've made in the town that I don't even live in so it's great <laughs> I feel like it kind of gave you a foot up a little bit you know to push you into that and start making those connections whereas a lot of artists start on Broadway and they have to they have to like go in themselves and and who do I need to know who do I need to talk to who you know so totally. yeah that's I, that's really cool I've never really heard of somebody getting a deal kind of how you did that's it's yeah and it's very cool like I love my team of people that I get to work with at Universal especially like the guys that I work with um Universal Canada like they're really into developing artists um their roster is pretty small but like they give they give me the like full attention always and they're always like just pushing me and trying to find ways to you know help me so yeah I really appreciate their support and it's just freaking cool yeah that's awesome oh my gosh so to kind of dig into the music why we're here uh you the song i'm gonna be previewing today guys is old dirt roads and what tell us a little bit about this song owen give us you know so when they do listen to it they kind of have something in their mind a vision for it totally yeah so i wrote this song in 2019 which is like five years ago now which is crazy um we ended up, I mean, we put it out last August, but originally I had, I mean, I wrote it in my, my college dorm room. I was going to school in a town called London, Ontario, and I'm from a small town of a thousand people, grew up on a farm outside of that. So like there ain't, there's no traffic. And, um, I remember, you know, waking up at seven every day and having to drive into school and it was just like traffic for like like an hour I felt like hours to me it was probably like 20 minutes but still I hated it and I just was like I got home one night and I I wanted to write about the place I grew up the old dirt roads we used to ride down my buddies and I just missed the simplicity of home and that's sort of where the song came from I wrote it in like an hour um in 2019 and I recorded it in my bedroom I was going to school for audio production so I learned how to like produce records and stuff um so I recorded it in my bedroom put it out and then I ended up getting this record deal. We re-recorded it with my new producer down in Nashville. Took down the old version, put up the new version. So the song's been out for like five years, but technically it's only been out since August, since we re-put oh, it out. My God. So now it has this whole new life form, which is crazy. I mean, I've been playing it live for five years. So it's just so cool that now, you know, it has like 30 million streams and it's people getting are... the attention it deserves. Finally. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to see it doing what it's doing. And it's all about the home my hometown and the place that I grew up. And it really is every lyric in that in that song is true to me and the way I was raised. So it's just cool that people are connecting with it. Yeah, well, wait till you move to Nashville. You're not going to like that traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better, I know. Like, you better find fun. somewhere outside of the city to live because... Whew, I know it's crazy. Nashville is such a growing city. Every Uber I get into talks about the fact that it's just booming right now. Are you in Nashville right now? No, not right now, but I have a, I have an apartment down there. And so I swear every time I, I go down there, probably a week or two out of the month, but every time I go down there, I swear it's grown. Oh yeah. Just to, get, just to get on, to, you get on that main interstate to go right into town. I mean, you're sitting there for 30 minutes. It, in, it could be 9am. 
you really have to time out like where you need to be and when because you got to account for that traffic. Like, I've made that mistake a couple times taking Ubers and stuff. It's like, oh no, I'll just call an Uber. We're good. And then all of a sudden, I got to text my buddy, "Hey, I'm gonna be 30 minutes late because I'm sitting here." And I'm from a I'm from a town just like you in Illinois. Like we have 500 people. Grew up like my one road to high school. It's a one lane road, dirt road, <laughs> straight to school. So I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just- yeah, really, really cool. So another song you just released is called Homeless. Guys, it's not homeless. Like he's homeless. It's homeless. Um, and this song kind of talks about being on the road and chasing your dreams. And obviously, like we've talked about, you are a dreamer. You've always been a dreamer. You wanted to be in the NHL at one point. And then you wanted to be a country music star, which shoot for the stars. I'm here for it. Um, but how this song is really about being grateful for this life that you have, but also missing home. And and how do you need to not feel guilty for, for you're living this life, but you miss home and you miss your people. What has the response, this song, what came out a month ago, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I mean, just under a month, maybe three weeks ago now. Um, What was, what was the response to this song? It's been great to see this. I didn't know how people were going to relate to it, but now that I think about it more, I mean, so many people can relate to, even if you're not a traveling musician, like the fact of, you know, people travel for work or, you know, truck drivers, Mm -hmm. people who need to be on the road and away from home because they got to do what they got to do to like to get by sort of thing and just miss the people that they're not with. And that's where the song came from um, this past year, past two years, I guess I've been doing more travel than I ever have in my entire life. And um it's amazing to get to go on tour radio tours and and you know do the thing and travel around and see new places and meet new people and it's like something i've always dreamed about doing um and then i guess a a byproduct of that is hours in the car looking at the window or on an airplane and you're just like when you have all that time to yourself you just start thinking about you know i wonder what so-and-so is doing or what are my parents are doing right now or you know it just it just And like, that's where, that's where the song came from. Like, I love that I'm seeing more, but I hate that I'm coming home less because I really love where I'm from. And uh, I always want to have a spot here in, uh, in my album, for sure. Yeah, you'll never, never really be gone. And I think it's really important for musicians, especially to remember where they came from, because this life can, can chew you up and spit you out really fast. And I mean, it's a, it's a roller coaster. You're on it and there's no slowing, there's no slowing down. So to remember where you're from and those people who made you who you are and your parents, I think that is what continues a musician's career to become even more successful when they don't lose that part of them. Cause at the end of the day, that's what got them to where they are. 100%. I, there's nowhere, I wouldn't be nowhere near where I am right now without the support of just like the, the people that I grew up with and the people that didn't even know me, but they came out because there's this kid from mild May that's playing at the bar tonight. Let's go check them out. And then they would just come out every weekend and support me, even though I was, you know, writing bad songs, they would still come out and tell me they were good. So it gave me the, gave me the hope to keep writing more until I got a good one. And, uh, I think that's sort of what propelled me to just put the blinders on and just stay focused with the songs I was writing and, and where I wanted to be. So I owe it to them and that they'll always be a huge part of my story and continue to, to, you know, write the story with me. So it's super cool that they support like that. What's it been like going from playing, you know, you go from playing all in a span of what, five years you go from playing these little gigs to now opening for artists like this year, Chase Rice. So you're going to be playing, I mean, to thousands and thousands of people. I saw a few, like a few videos on your social media. I mean, packed houses. Yeah, it's crazy. It's totally like, crazy. I mean, you ever just like before you got on stage, you're like, how did I get here? Oh, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, sometimes I have panic attacks because I'm like, <laughs> oh, like I was just in a bar somewhere <laughs> over the dinner hour and nobody was looking at me. I was playing in the corner you know, playing cover songs and sneaking in the odd original song. And now here I am. And I have to entertain these people. Like I'm on the stage, they're, they're buying a ticket. I'm, it starts, it, it kind of scares me a little bit, but it's super exciting. And it's, it's been a fun process of crafting a cool show that we think is, is rocking and fun and entertaining. So it's been great. Do you have to, you have to ever like tap into that bit, you know, like that, how do you, Oh, I can't imagine having to entertain that many people. And you want their, <laughs> you want their eyes on you. It's like, how can I pull everyone in? Not just yeah. one person, but how can I make everyone want to listen to what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, and that comes with just, I think, I always just try to be me up there. I'm not trying to be anybody I'm not. Like, 
my song or my, my, my show is a lot of stories and I just kind of, you know, set it up and, and tell you about my life and there's, there's highs and lows and it gets rocking and there's a down, you know, there's down moments on a piano and it's just like this whole journey of just me. So it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty fluent. It's pretty organic for me to just sing the songs I've always been singing and, and hopefully people can gravitate towards that. So it's cool. What's been the coolest moment in your career so far? Coolest moment. I've been asked this before and I still have to say, I think we were on tour with Tyler Hubbard last year and he pulled me up every night and I got to sing cruise with him. So that was like crazy because I remember, you know, bumping cruise every day with the boys were just rocking. Like when it first came out, like that was a, like it's still a banger. And then to get to sing it with them. That's so funny. Round here came on yesterday. Me and my mom were in the car and I was like, oh, this used to be the jam. Yeah. Round here is a banger too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was cool that we got to do that together. And um, he's a cool guy. And like, we still text every once in a while. And it's just cool that he's like a supporter now. And um, I'm a huge fan of him. So I mean, it's it's cool to have that connection. I'd say that's that's got to be one of the coolest moments that's happened so far. But honestly, every day, every week, there's like something new that's happening that I'm just mind blown about. So it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so in 2024, is there any, any projects you can tease a little bit, anything you have coming up that we should be? Yeah. I mean, I'm about to announce today, actually, I'm supposed to announce, I have another single coming out um, on the 23rd in two weeks from now. Okay. Um, it's a, yeah, this one, this one is a, I grew up listening to all kinds of music and I used to have this little Walkman like CD player and my big headphones when I was like 10 years old and I got a CD wallet full of my parents burnt CDs like mixtapes just like goes from Steve Miller band to Green Day to Merle Haggard to Eminem to like all this like crazy shit and I would just I would skip through and memorize track like the track numbers and figure out all my favorite songs and like just listen to song by song and it was John wasn't drama specific. It was just whatever. And I think that's where, um, I think that's what sort of my writing style has catered towards is like, I'm just writing music that I want to listen to. And this yeah. next song is, uh, it's definitely something I want to listen to. I wouldn't say it's the most country sounding thing in the world, but it's definitely rock and roll. I mean, if you, if you are aware of Weezer, the band at all, um, I would say there's some influence there from a band like that. So, I mean, it has country elements to it, but it's yeah. certainly, certainly no, not. That's, one of those. And that's really cool because I think a lot of people, especially right now, I, hopefully it's slowly starting to transition, but it's the same sound. It's the same Morgan wall and it's the same, like people are trying to redo exactly what he did thinking that it's going to make them. But I think I was talking, do you, do you know who Mary Cutter is? Yeah, yeah. She, she just released the Devil's Money song. And I was talking to her the other day. She's written with for a bunch of artists, but she says she's like, you know, I just write how I feel. And it, like, but that those are the type of artists that end up changing the game. The artists that just they stay, like you said, you always stay true to yourself. And so I think that's really cool. It's you're not, you don't really put yourself into this one category, like this is my sound and nothing else. Yeah, I I never want to be that way. Like, I mean, Old Dirt Roads is doing real well for me right now. And I don't want to, you know, just cater towards, here's 10 more songs that sound like Old Dirt Roads. This is now me because gotta play I'm, with it. I'm a play complex with person. Sound. What's that? You got to play with it. Play with your sound. Exactly. And, exactly. Just... and this song is like one of the most fun songs to just play live and listen to in the car. And I'm Damn just so glad to hear it. When we were in the studio recording this one, um, I mean, I've done a bunch of recording with with a bunch of Nashville guys, but specifically this song, I remember we were in the studio and usually after the session, the guys were like, man, that was great. Like, great, you know, great to hang and can't wait to hear these songs. Like, you know, take care, have a good one. But like after this one, we're like, like, let's have some beers. Like, can we listen back to this? Like, we were all just in the control room, just rocking out. Like they, they loved it and it was just a vibe. So I can't wait to see how people react to it. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I'm so excited for that. That'll be awesome. I'll definitely, I'll have to preview it on the station. That'll be awesome. Um, and then to just kind of, to kind of wrap it up, I like to ask everyone, you know, everyone has a different path and a different journey, but everybody also has a different piece of advice that they would give someone based on their journey. So if you could give somebody listening, you know, maybe there's a kid out there that, you know, he's in the car with his mom and he is just, he's 
loves music. He, he, but, but people are telling him, you know, oh, that's not really a real career. You know, what piece of advice would you give to people out there that want to do something like you're doing? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And um, it all comes down to like, if it's something you love to do, then just never stop doing it. And like, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Like if you have a passion for music, then music will always be there. Like that's the nice thing about writing songs is like, any day of the week, like if something ain't going my way, I can pick up the guitar and write a song. It like puts me in such a great headspace. And I mean, music will always be there for you. So I think um, keep your head down, stay focused and just believe in yourself. And if as long as you don't stop, you know, as long as you don't give up, I think it'll work out for you in one way or another. And uh, I'm just a dude from a small town in Ontario, Canada. And I don't know how, you know. If he I'm, can do it, guys, you can yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah like I mean I don't know what I'm doing I'm just a dude so I mean yeah just you know just do the thing you got it <laughs> you guys heard that I mean I think in anything it doesn't even matter if it's specifically music I think anybody can take something from that just do the work you have to do the work and be consistent and not stop don't don't give up because in the first month or two it's not going your way or you're not getting gigs just totally. just keep going if it is what you love it will work out just keep going. totally I would say like, yeah, don't expect it to be like an overnight thing because I mean, when I first started, I was just playing every Thursday, Friday, Saturday at some dive bar for four hours a night. And that was like, at the time, I mean, it's a lot, but like, that's what developed my singing so much, like 12 hours a week of just singing cover songs and singing the odd original song. Like that just developed me as a, as a singer and a guitar player. And then that gave me the confidence to you know, write better songs and be able to be in front of people. And, and uh, I think just, you know, have fun with it, but put the work in for sure. Well, Owen, I'm so glad we got to kind of chat today after many reschedules, but um, it's really cool to see a kid from nowhere become, you know, start to rise. And, and it, it makes me very, very happy. So you guys can find Owen on all his socials. It's Owen Wriggling. It's R I E not like just rig. The E is silent. Mm -hmm. Uh, make and then um, you guys can find Owen on all the socials, Owen Wriggling Music, and make sure you guys check out all his new music. I think you can kind of re relate to him regardless of who you are. Um.